OK, let's get the labels working. To the group selection we append a text element and set its X position to the length of the bar minus 30. We set its Y position to the bar height divided by 2. This is possible because we're using groups for each bar, so the Y position is relative within the group. The text is set with a function from where we return the view count of the screencast. When we save that out, you can see that the view counts are rendered on the tips of the bars. You've probably noticed that some bars are quite small, causing their labels to be hidden. To fix this, we change the minimum value in our view range on our scale function. This just says that the minimum size of a bar will be 60. Hmm. OK, let's make it 100. How useful is this? This is a really good example of how D3 translates from data to the screen. Changing one little number affects the graph in a really elegant way. We want to show titles of our screencasts, so we duplicate this text rule here and set its X position 5 pixels from the left. And we return the title from the function, not the view count. That looks pretty cool. As you can see, the titles and view counts overlap for some of the bars, so let's change our scale again to ensure that we've got enough space for all the titles. Cool! That looks like a pretty decent graph to me.